Hey guys, my name is Dice Roland, and today we're going to be taking a look at another original movie versus its sequel to see which is better. These were suggested to me by a lovely individual that I get to talk with in person. These movies are part of the found footage style of horror, much like The Blair Witch Project and VHS. So, without further ado, this is my original versus sequel review of Creep vs. Creep 2. Creep was directed by Patrick Bryce in 2014 and was his directorial debut. It's based from a story that Mark Duplass and Bryce himself wrote. The movie starts off with Aaron, played by Patrick Bryce himself, as he films his trip to a mountain in response to a Craigslist ad looking for a videographer. Once he arrives at the house of the person who created the ad, he's greeted by Joseph, played by Mark Duplass. Joseph tells Aaron that he had cancer and beat it. However, now he has an inoperable brain tumor. So the reason he made that Craigslist ad was to find someone who could film him in his everyday life in order to document who he is for his unborn child. Through some odd moments and jump scares, Aaron follows Joseph into the woods as they search for a healing spring. After finding it, they decide to get some pancakes at a nearby diner. Aaron learns that Joseph had sort of spied on him when he first arrived. Later, Joseph convinces Aaron to come inside and have some whiskey with him. At this point, Joseph tells Aaron that years ago, he found out that his wife was into some uh, kinky shit involving animals, so he put on a wolf mask and got jiggy with her without her knowing it was him. After learning this, Aaron really wants to get out of there, but can't find his keys. So he has another drink with Joseph, but this time he drugs Joseph so he can try to find his car keys. Instead, he finds Joseph's phone, which starts ringing. Aaron answers it to find that Angela, Joseph's wife, is on the other end. But it turns out that Angela is actually Joseph's sister, who informs Aaron that he needs to get out of the house, as Joseph has some issues. Joseph surprises Aaron again, and Aaron confronts him, saying he knows the truth and just wants his keys. Joseph doesn't take this so well and proceeds to block Aaron's way out while wearing the wolf mask. So, Aaron has a scuffle with him and manages to escape. Afterwards, we're shown some footage of Joseph digging a hole in the ground. This turns out to be some footage Joseph sent Aaron after he returned home. Aaron continues to have odd nightmares and receives a package with another DVD, and a wolf plushie with a heart locket inside, which has a picture of Joseph and Aaron inside and a less than heartwarming message of J plus A forever on the back. This prompts Aaron to install some new locks in his house and call the police. But it turns out the police don't give a shit, and that night Aaron is jolted out of bed by a loud sound that turns out to be Joseph standing outside his door. And like an idiot, Aaron goes outside to investigate further, which most likely left the door open for Joseph. We then see Joseph take a snip of Aaron's hair, and in the morning Aaron finds another DVD. Joseph explains to Aaron that he knows he has issues, but he's a very lonely person. Once again, Aaron proves that he's smart, but not that smart, and goes to the meeting spot that Joseph had chosen in order to talk to him. This results with Joseph sneaking up behind him wearing the peach fuzz wolf mask and axing him in the head. With that, the movie ends with Joseph talking to another person who is calling about the Craigslist ad and revealing that he's done this sort of thing multiple times before. Creep 2 was directed once again by Patrick Bryce, with Mark Duplass co-writing it and it was released in 2017. The movie begins with a new guy, Dave, receiving a package much like Aaron had, with a DVD and a wolf plush with a camera hidden inside. Joseph arrives and seems to be playing the part of being Dave's friend, but Joseph reveals that he was the one stalking Dave. But he can't keep up this game because he's lost interest, and it isn't fun anymore. Which, of course, results in a very bloody end for Dave. We then switch to Sarah, who runs a show that takes a look at the people who posted some of the weirder Craigslist ads. However, she has encountered a problem that a lot of YouTubers face, which is low views and lackluster engagement. One morning, Sarah finds Joseph's ad and decides to contact him in order to meet. She drives out to where Joseph is, and this would be the first time I've seen someone use a blender as a jump scare. 
Now this is where we learn that Joseph has in fact taken Aaron's name and immediately makes a connection with Sarah. He then tells her that he is in fact a serial killer and he wants Sarah to make a documentary with him about his killings and who he is as a serial killer. He shows her the same video we saw in the first movie when he killed Aaron, but he's not entirely thrilled with Sarah's reaction to it. Let's face it, if she's been going around answering all these weird Craigslist ads, she's callous to this dude. Aaron decides that the best way to make sure they're both prepared for this journey, they should show each other their naked selves in order to break down any walls between them. Ah. Ah. You thought! And now I can only wonder how long it will take before YouTube comes down with its mighty hammer. Moving on from that, Aaron drives them out to a spot he had chosen for the interview. In this part, I'm not entirely convinced that these weren't things that had actually happened behind the scenes, and they decided to just put them into the movie. After several attempts to get the shot right, Aaron and Sarah call it quits for the day. After Aaron throws a fit. And Sarah does what any reporter would do and decides to go down to Aaron's sulking corner to provoke him. This ends up being more of a therapy session where Sarah massages Aaron in a hot tub. Any questions? Aaron then attempts to scare the absolute piss out of Sarah, but she turns the tables on him by jump scaring him. This leads them to have a rather interesting game of hide and seek, I guess. This ends, and after a bit, Aaron tells Sarah that he knows about her series encounters. But he's okay with it because he wants her to kill him. That way his 40th movie can be special. The concept of beheading him doesn't work so well for Sarah, so he tries hanging himself. Sarah is upset by this after she gets him down and gathers her stuff to leave. But Aaron explains that he'd been wearing a harness the whole time, and wouldn't have actually hung himself. He was only trying to give her what she wanted for her show. He also tells her that he's not in fact a murderer, which of course is a lie. But Sarah believes him, and she gets him to play a game with her. Cause I'd fucking do that. Aaron leads Sarah into the woods where he's dug a grave that's meant for either Sarah or himself. But it turns out it's for both of them as Aaron stabs himself with Sarah's knife and tells her he's been planning a Romeo and Juliet type of ending. Sarah isn't so keen on that idea and takes off only to provide another jump scare that ends with Aaron stabbing her. The next shot we see is Aaron dragging himself and Sarah to the grave he dug. He climbs out and talks with the camera addressing Sarah, which causes him to be completely oblivious to the fact that Sarah is still alive. This gives her time to hit him over the head with a shovel and kill him. After all this, we see Sarah walking through the city and boarding a subway train with someone with a camera following her. Then we hear some whistling that sounds exactly how Aaron would whistle. Then the movie ends with Sarah looking into the camera which suggests that Aaron survived and found Sarah. Patrick Bryce has confirmed that there will be a Creep 3, which may give us some answers. And that was Creep and Creep 2. I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised by both of these movies. Everyone knows by now that the subgenre of horror that is found footage has been so saturated with so many horror movies. So I was a little hesitant as to whether or not I would enjoy these two. Both had great characters and plots. There were some very good twists thrown in too. Yes, jump scares were used and they could be seen as pretty cheap, but I really can't nag on them. They weren't necessarily overused, and a few of them actually got me. The silent moments are well used to build tension and an unsettling feeling for the viewer. I could empathize with the protagonist of both films, and even a little bit with the antagonist. You're never quite sure what's going to happen through both films. Now in the process of trying to decide which I think is better, I have to say that it wasn't easy to choose between them. They're both great movies with equally awesome stories put into them, but I'd have to pick Creep. The reason I chose the first film is because, much like with other series, you're going into it with no idea of what's going to happen, or how the serial killer acts. I also thought it was pretty cool to see both of the guys who created this story get to play a part in it on screen too. Again, it was extremely difficult to choose between the two. As a matter of fact, we very nearly had our first tie in my Versus reviews. I want to see what Bryce and Duplass do with Creep 3, and I look forward to any other projects outside of the Creep series they may work on. 
So that was my original versus sequel review of Creep vs. Creep 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. And don't forget to leave a comment down below. What do you think of these movies? Which one do you think was better? Are there any horror movies that you would like to see me review in the future? Also, don't forget to share this video to help the channel grow and subscribe for more videos like this. See you later.